Hello, everybody. This is Yu Chao, and he's presenting for Power Up iOS. Hello, everybody. I'm Yu Chao, and I'm going to do a demo about Power Up iOS project, which I've worked on through GSOC 2017. Um, before heading directly into the project, let me introduce myself briefly. Um, so my name is Yu Chao. I am from Taiwan, and I'm currently studying abroad at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. I am a second year computer science student, and I'm extremely passionate about the fields where technology and art meet, such as animations and games. As I've said, I work on the Power Up iOS project for GSOC 17. And the reason why I pick Power Up to work on is that First of all, um, I really enjoy game development uh, in all aspects, including gameplay programming, game design, and game art creation. And um, I also regard myself as kind of a hardcore gamer. So I really want to work on some projects related with games. And on top of that, I truly believe in educational games or some people like to call, call them serious games. Um, I think that games could truly transform a people, uh, could truly transform people. And as game designers, I think we should make games that transform people in a good way, make them better people. Um, lastly, I really like the idea of power up projects, which it aimed at providing a fun and way for adolescent girls to learn about reproductive health. So here is uh, the team members of Power Up. As you can see that um, the team consists of three smaller teams. The first one is UI, UX, and graphic design team. They worked hard on updating the UI elements and providing the app with um, some nice artworks. And as you may guess, the Android team works on the Android version of PowerUp, and the iOS team works on the iOS version. And here is a brief fact list about PowerUp. So first of all, it's an educational mobile game in the genre of choose your own adventure. We target adolescent girls as our main audience. And since it's an educational game, we aim at providing the players with reproductive health knowledge, uh, gaining them better self-esteem, and teach them conflict resolution skills, which would be useful in their social life. Now I want to talk about uh, what I actually worked on through GSOC 17. Um, I've worked on three major tests. And the first one is code refactoring. Um, before GSOC 17, uh, the project is, the code base of the project is a little unorganized. Um, not only the model code is written within the controllers, but also there are a lot of redundant, U, uh, redundant view controllers. Um, to tackle those issues, I wrote a singleton class to wrap the database operations. I cut and merged some of the unneeded view controllers as a storyboard, what the storyboard looks like um, before GSOC. And this is what I've done. I, I've made that uh, look simpler and work more flexible. Um, and lastly, I separated model code from controllers and the iOS app. It is better to abide to the MVC pattern. This, uh, for the second test, I worked on implementing three mini games. Um, we add the mini games because we think that it could make uh, the game more interactive and more fun. 
So the first game is the Minesweeper game. It helps players learn the success rate and pros and cons of different contraceptives. It looks a lot like an ordinary Minesweeper game. However, we make it as a game of pure chance because um, we want to simulate the actual success rate of different contraceptives. And the second one is vocab matching game. Uh, the game aims at teaching players reproductive health related vocabulary. The players have to drag and swap the clipboards with text on them and trying to match the text with certain icons. The third one is Think to Swim game. It's a Mythbuster-like game aiming at uh, clearing sex-related myths feed by peers or public media. It's a lot like a trivial quiz, a trivia quiz game uh, where some statements would be presented and the players have to de de uh, determine whether it's a true statement or is it just a myth. And the third task I've worked on is apply new UI, UI elements designed by Kim. Um, usually, the new artworks would be uploaded would be uploaded on the Power Up Android repository on GitHub, and I usually downloaded them on a weekly basis and apply them to the iOS. So the new UI element looks a lot better compared to the previous one. Um, now let me demo the actual app. So here is the start scene of Power Up. Uh, you can click on the About button to read uh, what's this game about why, and why this app is needed. Um, let me create a new game, a new avatar. And this is the avatar creation scene. You could pick the skin color you like, uh, the eye color you like, and the, the clothes. Um, since currently there is only one set of clothes, so I can't actually choose which clothes I like but we will add more clothes later on. Um, and hairstyle. Let's continue to the map scene. Um, and as you can see, in the map scene, there are a lot of buildings here. Um, each building represents a different scenario with, where the players could play through. And to unlock further scenarios, you have to first complete the previous one. So let me click on the first scenario. So here is the home scenario of the game. Um, in, in every scenario, a dialogue would be presented here on the top, and the players have to choose which answers they want to reply. Let me choose them randomly. And some of the choices would lead to the complete scene of the scenario. In every complete scene, the players would gain some, a certain amount of karma points which they could spend on the store scene uh, for new accessories. Let me head back to the map. And as you can see, the next scenario is unlocked. But let us first check out the store scene. So in the store scene, there, there are a lot of hairstyles, clothes, and accessories which you could choose from. Let me buy this one, purchase. And it will automatically be applied to the avatar. Now, let me also buy a hairstyle. And as you can see, after an item is bought, a green check mark will be show, show in the front of the item. And the buy button will be changed to the select button. So that the players could all, always uh, change between the items which she previously owned. 
I mean, she she currently owns, and if buy something too expensive, then a warning pop up will show saying that you don't have enough points to buy that. Let's get into the next scenario, and you can see that your your avatar, the the bag and the hairstyle is applied to the avatar. Um, in, in some of the scenarios, there are some mini games integrated with it. Uh, for the school scenario, it is the Minesweeper game. Let me navigate to the Minesweeper game. So here is the Minesweeper game. For, for all mini games, there are a couple of tutorial screens which uh, tells what the game is about and how to play the game. Let's skip those and head directly to the game. So uh, the Minesweeper game consists of many rounds. In, in, each, in each round, a contraceptive method is presented here in the box. And the players have to choose between the 25 slots here, which uh, some of the slots will turn out to be mines, and while the others will, will be just safe slots. Uh, and the number of safe slots over the total slots is in proportion to the actual success rate of the contraceptive method. So uh, for example, if the success rate of condom is around 90%, then 90% of the slots will turn out to be safe slots. Let me pick one randomly. So the green star means that uh, it is a safe slot. Let me pick, pick another. So the game ends in two scenarios. The first one is that if, if I pick five consecutive green stars, then the game succeeds. Otherwise, if I pick one red star, meaning the mine, then the game will end, uh, then the game is a failure. Let's see if, what will I pick? So I pick another green star, so it's, the game is a success for me. And as you can see, there are uh, two red mines here. And after each round, the pros and cons of the contraceptive method will be shown. Now the scenario ends, and let's head into the hospital scene. So for the hospital scene, there is the vocab matching minigame. For the vocab, uh, so the vocab matching minigame consists of some tiles and some clipboards. And the tile spawn from the left end will move forward to the right over time. So what the player has to do is, is to, is to uh, drag and swap the clipboard so that the text match, match, matches the icon. So if, if it's a correct match, the star will blink green, and the score will be incremented by one. Otherwise, if it's an incorrect match, the star will blink red, and no score will be added. So here is a temporary ending scene for both time matching games during the score and the game over text. Now let's get into the library scenario. And for library for the library scenario, there is a think to swim game. So in the think to swim game, the avatar and the boat will sink over time along with the pointer of the water gauge. Um, the players have to determine whether uh, the statements are true or false by clicking on the true and false button. If 
they answer correctly, then the boat will be raised for a certain altitude. And if I uh, select a wrong answer, the boat will just keep on sinking. And the game ends when the timer reaches zero or the pointer reaches the bottom of the water gate. So now when the timer reaches zero, the game completes. I can see my score as the correct answer and my incorrect answer. So that, that's all for my demo and let's head back to the slide. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is the future scope of Power Up. I believe that after GSoft 17, uh, Power Up is in a pretty good shape. Not not only the graphical assets are looks really good, but also the game the basic game structure are complete. Um, but I think that we could work on game polishing in content creation and programming more features in the future. For game polishing, I think that the game looks a little dull currently, uh, since uh, a little animations have been added to the game, and I'm thinking of adding some scene transition animations or animations for the avatar in the future. On top of that, currently there are no sound effects and background music at all for Power Up. However, um, I think music is really a vital thing to every game. So, so I guess future designers should definitely add some sound effects to the game. Moving on to game content creation. Currently, there are only about 20 accessories for the players to choose from. Um, so I think maybe future artists should work on adding more accessories to the game so that the, so that the players could have a wider variety of accessories to choose from. Uh, the next thing is, um, uh, since since um, Power Up is a choose your own adventure game, I believe that we definitely need more scenarios. Um, so I guess future developers should design more plot outlines and maybe polishing the existing dialogue because currently um, the, the dialogue isn't that polished, and we only have four scenarios. Um, lastly, for programming, uh, for for programming, um, I think that almost all of the in almost all of the mobile games nowadays have Facebook or Twitter have a Facebook or Twitter share button integrated with it, so that the players could share their score on social networks. Um, I think that we could also add this functionality to Power Up so that the players could share the avatar or the game score of the minigame to the internet. Lastly, the superpower feature. So originally we planned on, uh, planned on implementing a superpower feature for the game which the players could gain some superpower, gain some superpowers such as um, telepathy, invisibility, or strength through conversation, and then use those superpowers in the mini games to gain certain advantages. However, currently the feature isn't isn't implemented at all, and I think that future developers could work on that feature. That's all for my demo. And thank you all for joining. And feel free to ask any questions.
Hi, you. Thank you for your presentation. I, I had a quick question in the scene completion. Um, it looks like you have a replay button, map, and then a home on the top right. Do the map and the home button go to the same exact place? Um, I guess for the home button, it, it will go direct, go directly back to uh, to this thing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hello, Yu Chao. Hi. Uh, I would like to ask, like, uh, which was the most challenging part for you in this game development, and like, what all was new for you, and uh, for how long have you been doing iOS programming? So, um, for me, actually, uh, most of the things are new. Uh, for example, I'm before DSOC seventeen, I actually haven't made anything, made any native iOS app myself, nor uses any this programming language or the, or the, not the drag kit framework. Um, so it's, it's quite challenging at the start for me. But, um, um, but uh, after doing some research and, and uh, browsing some tutorials, I, I, I guess um, I overcome most of the obstacles. And also, if there are still some problems, I, I always uh, ask my mentors for, uh, for help. And aside from that, um, unit testing and continuous integration are both new technologies for me. And at first, I I barely knew what what's the meaning of the two terms, so I I figured that out during the second phase by uh, similarly uh, searching them on the web and asking my mentors for help. Oh, okay. So uh, I would like to say that you have done a great job. Thank you Thanks. for all your hard work. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much. You, you as, as Anshu said, you have done a really great job and I'm very excited to see the progress of this game so far. So thank you for all your hard work. Thanks. I, I think it's a real pleasure to work with all of you. Yay. Okay. I'll stop the broadcast now. <laughs>